Today, I'm going to show you how to add fire tier images in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is so cool. We're going to be using one of the filters hidden in Photoshop. It's the flame filter. Now, this was recently added to Photoshop, and I hadn't really used it that much. So I was like, let's figure this out and figure out how we can create some realistic fire in Photoshop. So we're going to use render flame and add actual fire to an image today. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and jump into today's episode. Here's our image for today. We got some friends hanging around a campfire, and it's looking good. I just want to add a bit more fire to our campfire here. So we're going to do that here within Photoshop, and we don't need any other images, which I think is really, really cool. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and create a new layer here, and I'll show you what we're going to be working with. We're going to go to Filter, down here to Render, and over to Flame. Now this is included in Photoshop CC 2015. So if I click on Flame here, it's going to give, give me a little message that says you actually have to use a path in order to use this filter. So let's hit OK there, and I'll show you guys how that works. So when it says a path, it means a path from the pen tool. So let's start by clicking here on our pen tool. So click on the pen tool, and basically just click and drag in the area that you want to make your flame. So I'll just make one over here so we can kind of get an idea of what it looks like to start with. We'll just click and drag in that direction and up in that direction. And when you're ready to uh, when you're ready to be done with your path, just hit escape. Okay, there we go. So that's our first path. Now you can select your path here by clicking in your paths dialog or from going to window and down here to paths. Okay, so we're on a work path here. Let's go to our layers and I'm on my layer. We don't want to do this on your background layer. You want to make sure you're on a new layer. Okay, so now with this path selected, we're going to go up to filter, down to render and over to flame. Okay, now here we have a really cool dialog box. There's a ton of options. So we're going to go through, we're going to show you a bunch of options. There are really a couple of these fr flames wind up looking pretty realistic. Some of them not so much. So we'll go ahead and show you like what to do and what to stay away from. So the important thing to note here is that this flame is going to render along this path. So we're going to start by bringing down our width here. There we go. And you're going to see it kind of starts on the right, curves to the left and back up to the right again, similar to what's going on here in my path. So you can actually define the shape of your path itself. Now here we have a few different flame types. The ones that I find look realistic are number one and number six. So we could make this a candle light if we wanted to. There we go. Oh, I clicked on number five. There we go. Let's go to candle light. Okay, candle light looks pretty good. Again, if you're going to be using a candle. Now there are some other ones like multiple flames along a path. This is um, looks more like a like if you were um, like had a fire poi or something like that, or you like swinging fire around in a circle. You could you could do this, and um, let me just increase the width so you can see there, like fire in movement and stuff like that. That would that would kind of be what's going on here. But for most cases, I find just using the flame type number one, one flame along a path. This is going to look really good. Okay, now. Options here, you can't change your length. That's determined by the actual length of your path. Okay, you can change your width. So going down to a lesser width, we have a like a, a very thin flame. And here, if I increase my width, we've got a much wider flame. Okay, now on the bottom, we can choose a custom color. So if you wanted blue flames or something like that, you could have that. I'd recommend just keeping that unchecked. And your quality, I would suggest having this be fine or very slow. Just the, uh, the best quality possible. Okay, now we have some advanced settings as well. So let's go ahead and click on our advanced settings. And we have turbulence. So our first mode, let's just change our width down a little bit smaller. There we go. Our first mode is turbulence. So as I bring this lower, we're going to have a smooth flame. This would be like with not much wind. As I bring this higher, you can see this is like, all right, there's a lot of like turbulence basically going on with this. Okay, next we have our jag. So uh, down to zero, this is going to be a smoother flame as well. And as I bring this up, this is like uh, kind of indicating maybe a little bit of camera movement or um, just kind of like randomness here. I'm going to keep that down lower as well. Now, opacity has to do with the intensity of your flame. So 
the, as you bring up your opacity, the flame is going to get brighter. And as we go over here, it's just going to like kind of get to white, which in some photos, this will actually make sense. If it's like a super long exposure or whatever, this may make sense. But for uh, clarity and, you know, making sure that all the detail in the flame is preserved, we're going to keep that a little bit lower. Now we can increase or decrease the amount of flame lines that we have here. Okay, so we can get a very, very complex flame if we want or keep it more simple because there are tons of different types of fire. Okay, and the bottom alignment, basically this is like to the left, it's going to like be uh, most of the fodder, <laughs> most of the fire is going to be grounded here. So it's put, gonna put most of the weight towards the bottom. Okay, and over to the top, it's going to like put, really push the flame up. All right, that looks good. Now, here we have a few different flame styles. So we have normal, our violent flame. There we go. And then flat flame. Okay, and I find for the most realistic flame, we want to click on normal. And we have a, f a few different flame shapes as well. So parallel, we can click to the center. We can spread that out. An oval flame or a pointing flame. And they don't make a too big of a difference. I usually just click on parallel or yeah, pointing, I actually like that, that's nice. And you can choose to randomize the shapes of the flames as well. All right, so we're gonna keep that unchecked. So this is basically a really nice preview of what our flame is going to look like. So keep in mind, it's using this pen path here as a guide of where my pen, of where my flame is going to go. So let's go ahead and hit okay. Now, if you decide that you like all these settings, you can go ahead and create a preset. So we'll just go to save preset, all right? And I'll just call this flame one and hit enter and there we go now we have a flame one preset so let's hit okay it's going to take just a second here and it's going to render this flame along this path so you can see it's using the path as like a midpoint for the flame okay so now that we have a flame rendered along a path we need to go ahead and transform it and get it to fit into our image so we'll show you how to do that Looking back at our image, we can see the pen path is still visible. So let's go ahead and select off of the pen path. We're gonna go to paths dialog here, or you can go to window and down to paths. Okay, and I'm just gonna, right now our work path is selected. I'm gonna click right here. Okay, and you can see that currently no path is selected. So work path here, the path is active, and we're just gonna click off it. Okay, now the flame itself is rendered on a layer. So let's go to our layers. Okay, and because I created a new layer, this flame is on this layer. So I can move it around. There we go, we can put it anywhere we want to. And let's go ahead and try putting it here on our fire. That looks pretty good. Now, keep in mind also that a flame is never gonna make anything darker because it's, it's a light source, right? So we need to change our blend mode also. Let's change our blend mode from normal down to lighten. Okay, because it, again, it, it shouldn't make anything darker. So you're your blend modes that you can look at here are both lighten and screen. Both should work pretty well. In this case, I think lighten looks a little bit better. Okay, now the cool thing about this, I have a flame on a new layer and I can really just transform this however I want because right now it's just, it's its own object on a layer. So if I wanted to blend a little bit better with the flame that I've got here, I can hit Control or Command T for my transform dialog. Okay, and maybe I can squish it down and rotate it around there we go, and hit enter there, and we've got a little bit more a realistic flame kind of coming out of the top of our fire there. All right, so there you can see, it's pretty easy to use. Now, my suggestion would be do this a couple of different times. The first time your flame might look like, you know, eh, that kind of looks okay, but after doing it a couple of times, you get the hang of it, and you'll be able to create a flame that actually looks pretty realistic. So let's jump back in, we're gonna create another flame this time we're gonna spread it even wider and it should look more realistic. Back in our image, let's go ahead and make this layer invisible for now. I'm gonna create a new layer. Okay, and we're gonna hit P for our pen tool. We're gonna to create a new path. And just zooming in here, I just wanna create like a little, little path here. So we're gonna go here and over to the right and just up like that. Okay, just like that. And hit escape when you're done. So again, this is my pen path. You can see it just goes like this Okay, just kind of in line with the actual fire. Now, it's also helpful to use this tool when there actually is a fire. Like, you could see, like, obviously, you can put a fire wherever you want. It's like, oh, his head's on fire. It's not going to look super realistic, right? So, <laughs> it's helpful to use this where a fire would actually be. Okay, so here we have our pen path. Now, on our new layer, let's go to filter. 
we're going to go down to render and over to flame. There we go. Now, in this case, what we want to do, let's go ahead and change our width here. So a very small width, this would work for like a, like a candle or something like that. In this case, we actually have kind of like a wide fire. So we're going to bring our width up a little bit more. OK, cool. That looks pretty good there. Now, let's go to our advanced controls. And I would just want to increase the complexity of the fire. We're going to add a couple more flame lines. So you can see this would be like one you know, really thick fire. But let's go ahead and add a couple lines. And that's just going to help it uh, look more similar to what we've got going on there. OK, our bottom alignment, again, if we pull this all, all the way to the bottom, it's going to put a lot of uh, like flame strength towards the bottom. OK, I want to kind of like bring this up just a little bit. And if we go to the right, it's going to be kind of like towards the top. So uh, what I'm doing is kind of like looking at my image here and kind of figuring out, uh, you know, what can I do here to, re uh, to create a flame that's going to look similar to what's going on in my image. OK, that looks pretty good. And we can bring our turbulence up or down. Here we go. Again, and I'm just looking at this. You don't need a flame in your photo visible. Like, that. that's not a prerequisite, but it can help. OK. And we're going to work on our opacity. Let's go ahead and bring that a little bit higher. Our flame style, we're going to keep on normal. And our flame shape here, we can just change. Yeah, parallel looks pretty good there. OK. So basically, this is going to be the flame that appears over top of my pen path on this layer. So let's hit OK there. All right, it'll take just a second. OK, let's go back to our paths. I'm going to click off of my work path. And you can see already the flame actually does look like it fits in my image. So this is the flame that we rendered out. Let's go ahead and put it back. I'm going to change my blend mode from normal down to lighten. That's really important. OK, and here we have our flame from our, basically from Photoshop in our new image, which I think is really, really cool. Now, in this case, I also want to make sure that uh, you can see the flame in our original image is, has a little bit of a soft edge. And the flame that we just created in Photoshop is really, it, it's got like very well kind of sharp edges defined there. Okay, so what we're going to do is just add a little bit of a blur to this to make it blend into the image a little bit better. So let's change our layer blend mode back to normal real quick because I'm going to change this into a smart object. And whenever you're going to change a layer into a smart object, you always want to make sure that it's on a normal blending mode. OK, so normal blending mode. Let's right click here, go to convert to a smart object. Now we'll change this back again to lighten. OK, and I'm going to add a blur. So we'll go to filter, down to blur, and over to Gaussian blur. All right, we don't need a huge blur, just something to like kind of smooth up the edges a little bit. There we go. And make it look more like it's a natural fire. All right, pretty cool. So there we have our fire over top of our actual fire. And let's go ahead and bring this one into and Maybe I can just shrink it down a little bit, and there we go. We'll just have a little bit more fire there in Photoshop. Yeah, this one is it's too thin. It doesn't match the, the rest of the fire in there. So you know what? I'll just create a layer mask on here and paint black on the layer mask on this little guy, and I think that'll actually clean it up a little bit better. Yeah, that looks pretty good there. OK, well, there we have it, guys. That's pretty easy to do. You know what? I don't even think we need this one. Let's just delete that out. So. Really easy to do. Basically, just adding a flame to any image in Photoshop. Pretty cool stuff. So if you guys want to do this on your own, it's really simple to do. Just follow these key steps. First, use the pen tool to create a path that you want your flame to follow. Just click and drag a couple of times and hit Escape when you're ready to go. Next, create a new layer and go to File, down to Render, and over to Flame. Here you're going to see a ton of different options. So I suggest playing around here. Create a bunch of different types of flame. This is going to be on new layers, so you can move them around and transform and things like that, so you get an idea of how to actually use this tool. Once you've created a flame that you like, it's time to change the blend mode. Now, fire is only going to lighten things. It's not going to darken anything. So we change our blend mode from normal down to lighten. And if you need to add a little bit of a blur, be sure to convert it to a smart object first, and then use a Gaussian blur. That'll allow you to change your Gaussian blur at any point in time. That's it for today's episode. So the next time you want to add fire in a photo shoot, just simply do it in Photoshop. It's really easy to do. If you love Photoshop and photography as much as I do, go ahead and click on your screen right about now. We'll send you free episodes every single week. 
And if you have a question or a comment about today's episode, just leave it in the comment box right down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone.